Welcome to CFO 2012 training video number five focusing on the line of scrimmage. This video is produced by the Ohio Valley and the Sun Belt Conference. With all the spread formations and wide open offenses employed today, action at the line of scrimmage has become much more difficult to officiate. Formations, shifts, movement by interior linemen, and action by the snapper or quarterback put a lot of pressure on the linesman, line judge, umpire, and referee. In 2011, over 20,000 fouls were called in 1,300 games, and 33% were line of scrimmage fouls, over five per game. The National Officiating Philosophies address issues involving the line of scrimmage with nine separate areas. This video will focus on legal and illegal action from these nine areas. Officials must work to keep their offensive linemen legal and should call alignment fouls only when it is obvious or after a warning to the player and the coach has been ignored. Don't wait until the fourth quarter to enforce the rule. To illustrate this philosophy, we'll begin with the requirement that all offensive players must either be a lineman or a back. In order to be a lineman, a team A player must be on his scrimmage line facing the opponent's goal line with his shoulders approximately parallel to that goal line. And either he is the snapper or his head breaks the plane of a line drawn through the waistline of the snapper. These two players then are clearly linemen. A back is any teammate player who is not a lineman and whose head or body does not break the plane of a line drawn through the waistline of the nearest Team A lineman. This player then is clearly a back. Let's turn our attention to this player whose position is not so clearly defined. It is apparent that his head does break a line drawn through the waistline of the nearest lineman. But our philosophy says that there's enough difference between these two players, one of whom is a lineman, to signify the second man in as a back and make him an eligible receiver. If the offensive player is lined up with his head clearly behind the rear end of the snapper, a foul should be called without warning, even if it's the first play of the game. To illustrate this philosophy, we're going to look at two formations. Here, we're going to draw a line through the waistline of the snapper, and it appears that all linemen are within that boundary except the tight end at the top. Here's a line drawn through the rear end of the snapper. He does intersect that. We will make that tight end legal, but warn his coach. In this formation, we'll draw a line through the rear end of the snapper, and it is apparent that there are two linemen on this side of the ball that do not meet the requirement. This becomes a foul at the snap without warning. If the defensive player is lined up with his head clearly in the neutral zone, blocking out the ball, a foul should be called without warning, even if it's the first play of the game. Borderline action will be warned, but you cannot warn all game long. To illustrate this point, see the defensive lineman bottom of the screen on the line of scrimmage in white. He is covering up the ball. The line judge cannot see the football. This becomes a foul at the snap without warning. Don't be overly technical on an offensive player who is a wide receiver or slot receiver in determining if he is off the line of scrimmage. When possible, make them legal. To illustrate this point, we're going to look at a few formations. In this one, the receiver to the widest part of the field uh, is on the line of scrimmage. In order for his teammate uh, to his right to be eligible, we would need to rule him in the backfield. Our angle is not good. From a coordinator standpoint, we would probably support however you ruled this, but in keeping with our philosophy, we should rule this player in the backfield. Here, take a look at the top of the formation. In order for this formation to be legal, we must rule this player as a lineman. Even though he doesn't meet the criteria technically, there's enough stagger between those two that we can rule him a lineman, making this formation legal. Turn your attention to the bottom of the screen. In order to follow our philosophy, we must rule this player a back. There's enough stagger between he and the end outside him that we can do that and maintain our philosophy, make this formation legal, make him an eligible receiver. 
Here, take a look at the highlighted players. In order to make this formation legal, we must put the third guy in in the backfield, therefore an eligible receiver making this play legal. Take a look again. He probably doesn't meet the requirement technically, but philosophically, we need to make this a legal play. Wide receivers or slot receivers lined up outside a tight end will be ruled on the line of scrimmage and covering the tight end if there is no stagger between their alignments. If there is any question, the tight end is not covered. Here's a good illustration of that philosophy. At the bottom of the screen, take a look at this tight end. The uh, player to his outside should be a back in order for him to be eligible. However, there's no difference between those two. This formation is legal, uh, but it comes a foul when the tight end goes downfield and the pass crosses the line of scrimmage. When there is question about the position of the offensive player or players, when the defense moves into the neutral zone and the offense reacts, the defensive player was moving toward an offensive player. This protects the defensive player and any offensive player who may have been involved. When a defensive player moves toward the neutral zone, causing the offensive man to move, and there is any question whether the defensive player was in the neutral zone, shut the play down and penalize the defensive player. Here are two examples to illustrate this philosophy. There may be question about whether or not this player is actually in the neutral zone, but it caused the offense to react in keeping with our philosophy. This is offside on the defense. Here's another play where a defensive lineman gets into the neutral zone and a, an offensive lineman reacts with a false start in keeping with our philosophy. This is offside defense. Anytime a defensive player shoots the gap and there is any question as to contact, err on the side of offside and shut the play down to avoid a free shot on the quarterback. Here's a great example of that philosophy. You can see a defensive player uh, rushes, has a, a clear path to the uh, quarterback and the back in the backfield. Uh, there's some question as whether or not he has touched anybody. Rule this offside defense. Here's another example. A defensive end has a clear path to a back in the backfield. We should shut this play down and rule offside defense. Here when the defender in blue crosses the neutral zone has a clear shot to the quarterback, we need to shut that play down. Here the defense in white, this player has a clear view to the quarterback. Uh, we need to shut this play down, offside defense. When in question, a quick or abrupt movement by the center or quarterback should be ruled a false start. Here the snapper is highlighted, watch his head that move right there is uh, designed to draw the defense offside and should be ruled a false start. In this play, the snapper bobs his head rather violently and uh, other offensive linemen move at the same time. Drawing the defense offside, this is a false start by the offense. Similar situation here, the snapper in an attempt to draw the defense offside, nods his head violently right there. Philosophically, this is a false start by the offense. Defensive players are allowed to move side to side and into and out of their defensive line as long as their movement is football related. If this movement is quick and abrupt and is designed specifically to draw movement by the offensive line, this is a defensive delay of game foul. Here the defensive team in white has multiple players moving for quite a while. They move up to the line of scrimmage, away from the line of scrimmage, laterally, back to the line. All of these moves are football related and they are legal. no foul. As you can see all of these players are performing moves that are normal defensive movements. This is perfectly within their rights and legal. Take a look at this tackle on the defense. 
you can see the player next to him makes a somewhat football related move but that jerk of the arm is not that is a foul by the defense here this player uh, circled is going to make a little jabbing motion this is not football related this is designed to draw a false start from his uh, receiver in front of him he has committed a defensive delay of game foul Thank you for your time today. Best wishes for a very successful 2012 football season.